So now I'm going to go through some nice ways that you can visualise um, your shape data. We can estimate the mean shape of our uh, set of aligned specimens or, or consensus shape using M shape. And now you can see we've got all the coordinates there, but we really want to visualise that so we can plot it. So I call it consensus. Okay, and then we can plot that with the axes that we want. Like so. Um, and now we want to plot all of those points. Okay, so you, you can see that we've got all of our points plotted, but then we want to put the mean um, on top as well. So our consensus shape. And then colour it whatever colour you like and do it red. Let's see. Any slight little mistake? Go. Um, so now, if we just zoom into that, we've got all of our points plotted and then our mean shape in red on top, or our consensus shape. Um, we could also do um, a transformation grid. So. So um, if you look at the previous literature, you'll see a lot of um, plot tangent space and things like that, and they're now defunct. So the stuff I'm showing you now is what they basically got replaced with. It's a better way of doing it, basically. So um, this is the transformation grid. This is another way of visualizing uh, the mean shape with the shape change from the sample. But something else that um, is really cool, or can be really cool, is to do individual deformation grids for basically any part of the graph that you're looking at you want. So I, I'm going to um, do it as an example with uh, principal components um, analysis, um, with principal components score one against two on the um, x and y axis. But technically, you could really do it on any graph that you've used. So I'll show you this one first. Oops. Just give that a name. And then we use this function, pick and plot, um, which is really cool because what it enables us to do is so here's our, our principal component um, graph, PC1 against 2, and you can see all your points there, and basically you can pick any point you like in this graph, and then do the um, deformation grid for it. So if I just pick that part, it says, um, oops, sorry, then it'll appear, which is just here, and then I can say whether I want to save it. Um, so say I've picked, for example, just one in the middle of that first species, and then you could do a deformation grid for it. Just a, a representative specimen of each or point of each uh, species. So then I can pick another point if I like. Um, and then I just pick one from, say, one of the other clusters. And then I can save that as well. Um, so you can make some really cool figures from this. Because um, um, you could have that in your paper and then have representative uh, deformation grids. 
which can be a lot more exciting than just looking at um, principal component uh, scatter plot. Uh, but you don't have to do that sort of plot. You could also do, say, um, if you watch the allometric part, you could do one of those. So I'm just going to do this as an example. So let's clear this first. It gets a bit busy otherwise. the same thing we did before on the, the plot allometry. Um, I'm going to use um, the predictor line, but you could do this with any of your graphs, um, the regression scores or whatever method you want. And again, we use this pick and plot um, function. This one. So we've got our predictor line, uh, like before, and I can just pick one. So this is quite cool with the allometric model because we can go for one right at the top. And let me just that one, and then we could save that. And then we could pick another point from um, right in the bottom. And then we can just keep doing that. So yeah, it's a really cool function and should hopefully help you to um, display your results really nicely in your paper.